she whispers in my ear, Blue wants to meet you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like, I can't even think of, I can't even think about it. I'm literally like, what the Welcome f- to the Lightweights Podcast. My name's Joe. Today's guest, we have Alicia Marie of Pretty X Unfiltered, Pretty Basic. Alicia Marie vlogs, Alicia Marie and Alicia Marie Co-host of the Lightweights Podcast. I don't mind it when I'm like, oh, they're on a date if I hear You don't someone. mind it when you're not on a yes! date? <laughs> Alicia is spilling some love secrets today. Is she dating? Is there a love story happening? I mean, I don't know. Are you leading me on or is this a possibility? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I was honest. I thought he was cute when I first met him. So if you haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000 followers. Thank you so much. Leave a comment down below. Leave a like. And without further ado, Alicia Marie. Should I be nervous? I, yeah. Yeah, you should. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's just say you're in the hot seat. Oh. Do you, do you feel the heated seats? No. It's on. Hang on. <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> it's oh, wow. like a massager. You're in zero, zero gravity. Wait, that would low-key be really sick. You know, you got this new podcast. I do. Pretty Unfiltered. Pretty X Unfiltered with Alicia Remy, Zane, and Heath. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That's the full term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty long. Yeah, and it's become a joke that now we just always say it that long, you know? And who's the name order? Alicia, Remy, Zane, and Heath. You got first. I did. Unintentionally, but it kind of stuck, and I was fine with it. Who came up with the name? We all met up a few months ago. We are like, trying to come up with names, and we had, like, four options, and they all sucked. <laughs> We really liked the play on words of, you know, taking Pretty Basic, taking Zane and Heath Unfiltered, and, like, merging the two. Our second option was basically unfiltered. Um, oh, that's pretty good, which too. Which is cute. Yeah. Like, would still still love that one. Um, but Pretty X Unfiltered was the final. No, I love that. I think it's so cool because you have four different people who've been in the game for so long. So you all have, like, how do we think about this in the most appropriate way? So it's fun to see everything unravel of how you're doing it. Oh, my God, yay. Even, like, from you guys going to get the sign, like, you know where to go. You know you have to get it. Make it look sick. You know how to get the lighting right. Like, you you guys really put your time into it. Did you like the behind-the-scenes video? I did. I ah, loved it. Thank you. Because I want to bring this studio upstairs to the bigger room so I can have – my whole problem was that I couldn't get three guests three people in here oh i never even thought about that oh wait because yeah. you had matt and carly on and they share that chair oh my god and i almost had insane clown posse on do you know who they are no they're like a rap group from detroit from like but like where are they gonna sit are they gonna are share they a gonna chair cuddle? i don't know i don't like, think they're into that like, hey you guys are so like please come on my podcast only one condition <laughs> well, there's one chair i know i'm working on it yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. i wanted to bring this upstairs that's why i was so you excited should. to see it oh my god it honestly it's so much easier than you think to do it yourself uh-huh especially because you have the lighting and all that stuff but um yeah we're really excited that's so sick we also have four people at very different stages in life which i think is so funny like we have two engaged two very single we have like two crossovers of just Rem and I, I, I mean, for people who've watched Zayn and Heath and me and Rem for like the longest time, this feels like the ultimate Disney crossover because we've collabed before, but like this really took people by surprise. So I think that's been really fun um, just seeing people's reactions. Does everyone have their contribution to the podcast now? Or are you figuring all that out? What do you mean? Are you editing and like Zane's doing thumbnails and Remy's doing topics and Heath's like- Oh my God. So weirdly enough, I don't know how, but I no feel one like does we, anything. No, no <laughs> one does anything. We all have such different strengths, which has been so nice. Like, obviously, Mariah's editing, um, and she's such an amazing editor. Um, I was gonna, sorry, I started with Remy, and I shouldn't have started with Remy because she joked. She's like, I feel like I've added nothing to this. She really has. She's added a lot. Um, as far as building the set, though, um, I'm, she, she was like, I will swipe the card, like, tell me what to do, etc. cetera. Um, but I should have put, put her last. It's a joke, and she gets it. Um, but Heath is so good bu physically building things. Like, I would be like, oh, I'll hire someone to si hang this on. He's like, are you kidding? No, I can do it for free. And I was like, I'm not used to, like, I don't know, thinking that way. Um, so well, he's last really time you did something, uh, the water yeah. <laughs> the waters came out of the we wall. We did, in fact, hit a pipe and a pressurized water pipe, actually, and had to open our ceiling. So What do you do? Do you call your dad and you're like, oh, I literally called my dad and be like, what? I knew. How do I shut off the water? I'm actually pretty handy. A like enough. I knew I had to turn off the water. I just that was the first thought in your brain. Oh, yeah, I knew I had to turn it off. Well, oh, my mine first... would be like to put my finger in no, the hole. Ash Ashley's like covering the wall. Water's squirting everywhere. My first first thought is, haha, this is so funny. Let me film it. Obviously, obviously, the phone was right there. Um, my second thought was, I know we need to turn off the water, but which one is it exactly? Because I know the water's right next to the gas. Like <laughs> you turn the gas on I'm higher. Like, literally. <laughs> so um, 
So, yeah. But Heath, amazing when it comes to the actual, like, hanging everything, doing everything. I, math? Oh, my God. I can't. When I, I have to remeasure, like, even hanging curtains. I have to redo it 20 times just because I'm like, okay, if this is 24 inches... But I need four of them. And then I'm like second guessing everything. Where does pie come in? No, literally. <laughs> Why? Why did I need to know pie? Um, it was pie day recently. Yeah. Did you celebrate? I did not. Me neither. Did I, I should have. Yeah. It was such a big day in school. It really was. You know how like the smallest thing during school would feel like such like you're like, oh, it's pie day. Like it like felt so big because yeah. it was just something to look forward to. The whole stop, drop and roll thing. Like, they really hammered that into us. I really oh, yeah. thought I was going to catch on fire. I've learned more on TikTok than I ever have in school. And I know how to get out of, out of quicksand. And, like, I saw this TikTok. And will I ever have to be in quicksand? I don't know. But God forbid I am. I'll know what to do because I saw this TikTok. You have to, like, put all your weight on one leg and then move the one in a circle. And that's how you can get higher. And then you switch and do the same thing. And that's how you can get out of quicksand. Oh, that seems like the worst way to go. To go. Oh. Oh. I don't want to think about it. Anyways, sorry. So the four of you, what do you contribute? Um, I feel like when it comes to more of the like marketing or the tech stuff or even editing, like I've like a lot of the trailers and stuff, the creative for the shoot, I feel like that I had my hands like in that a lot. Even just coming together with mood boards and all that kind of stuff for the shoot. I love that stuff. I love it so much. That's you my still, favorite. You still edit your own videos? I do still edit my videos, but at the same time, I have someone helping me with my vlogs. We're testing different people out for my main channel. Um, but like that video specifically, I'm so proud of it, but there's no one who could have done it like I did just because the timeline of it all like it's from start to finish and I love like the the documentary kind of style of it all like I can't, how do I explain that to someone versus you know what I mean what do you edit in final cut <laughs> and do you use shortcuts yeah 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 yeah. how long does it take you to do a video like that, that video took me two days but I was like on my couch rotting for two days like I literally did nothing I just like sat on my like is your edited. editing position like mine where she's like yes <laughs> oh my god I finally started using a lap desk because my mom would be yelling at me and I'm like ugh, I know I finally invested in a super nice like what do they call it like a computer computer um chair right like it's good for your back it was so expensive I was like finally I've earned this you know years and years of editing don't I still prefer it. my couch. It's the best spot. It really is. It, I prefer it. I can have background stuff on. I also definitely have ADHD, so I'm constantly changing my like position. Like Sitting at an actual chair at a desk for the longest time is so hard for me. Can you send me a video of you editing? I'll send you one of mine. Oh, yeah. I'm literally like this. I'm like this. And then I'm like... I have music going in the other room, and I have the TV on, and then I have my phone, and I'm editing like... Yeah. Oh, my God. And then I hyper... It's so... Oh, my God. I, I totally will. It's literally like... It's so funny. Um, but yeah, I definitely would love to f find an editor who like just gets me. I think that's the hard part because I'm more than happy to pay for someone who's more experienced, but it's just really hard... When in the end, I'm like, oh, I would have changed this. I would have changed this. So I'm like, is, is that something I just need to accept that I need my hand in it? Right. I feel like you do because it's your channel. It's your signature. It just you're... takes so much time. <laughs> yeah, but you're not editing your podcast. So yeah. I feel like that could be passed along. But otherwise, it's like your creative baby, which it's I always know. been. I know. So we'll see. I mean, I do need to start uploading more, though. Like, I miss YouTube. So we'll see. There's a whole lore on your podcast. Oh, there is. Is there? There, the whole there. I mean, yeah, there is. <laughs> I, I'm gonna screenshot some. Com I screenshotted some comments. <laughs> Plot twist: This whole podcast is just Heath and Remy setting up Zane and Alicia. Three thousand six hundred likes. <laughs> wow. I have three thousand six hundred burner accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd be so cute together. I was just thinking this. I need them to fall in love. And then there's a quote. 26 minutes in he's cute <laughs> end quote <laughs> end quote is there a love story happening i mean i don't know i feel like we'll have to continue watching to see are you leading me on or is this a possibility i mean i i was honest i thought he was cute when i first met him when was that when he came on the podcast that was the first time you met him yeah, oh, our first time ever meeting was when we did a pod swap. Isn't that funny? Oh, 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 okay. Not, not years the recent ago. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Th this was like years and years and years ago. Um, and you thought, he's cute. Yeah, I thought he's cute. Oh, I was like, he's cute. Like, he's cute question mark or like, he's cute period? It was more of a, wait, 
like I was more confused because like the person I had only seen online was definitely like not not that that's what I okay in the episode I'm like don't take this the wrong way and that's what I meant by it of like I was so shocked because I was like wait that's not you like you look better in person right that, that was the vibe of don't take this the wrong way what is your type nowadays I see I don't even fucking know what are you looking for um I mean I'm definitely a relationship girly I I'm like someone to you know try <laughs> someone who likes me just take the first step maybe like open the door for me I don't know you want that old school uh, no I kind of like I struggle with that because I was dating this one guy Spider-Man no 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 not him <laughs> not officially and he was so gentleman like but it was hard for me to accept that and I'm sure that's something I need to work in like therapy with of like why does that bother me but it felt like forced and I don't like that I'm like uh like mm. but also I've I've been so fucking independent for how long right. like I'm so used to doing everything myself so I think that's something that's kind of hard for me to let go of have you ever gone on trips with your former lovers no oh that was before I had money <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, so that's a whole other thing. But I do want someone to like help me with my suitcases and stuff. So what do what dates mean? look like now with you? I mean, usually drinks or a dinner. That's I'm the typical Yeah. Oh, he's cute, let's go get a drink. Yeah, yeah. I always would like prefer drinks because it can be a little less time. Dinner can feel awkward if it's too the one thing I hate about dinners is those places where you're so close to people and they can hear the conversations that you're having. And it's so funny because I, I don't mind it when I'm like, oh, they're on a date. If I hear someone. You don't someone, mind it when you're not on the yes! date? <laughs> but if I'm on the date, I'm already I'm already the type of person. Like, I don't like the attention of people being like, oh, my God, she's talking to that guy. Like, which is so Remy to a, her core. Like, she's just like, oh, my. Like, she's so like that. For a first date, if I, if I don't know the person, I would really, eh, I don't know. I'll do it. I'll do dinner. It just feels like more of a commitment if I don't like it. But, like, it's fine. I'll get through it. Because <laughs> I have a friend who's single and I, I like to pick his brain on why he wants to just go to get a drink and then it turns into two drinks and then they hang out. You at yeah, because you can vibe it out. Like the worst thing is I don't want to waste anyone else's time. I don't want to waste my time, which is, again, something I need to work on. And I don't know if he would agree, but it's like if you have one drink and then that's good. But if it's going well, you can get another one and then you can like be like, hey, are you hungry? Do you want to grab a bite or like whatever? Like it can it can, it can progress, I guess. Uh -huh. But um I just I don't know. I don't want someone spending like so much money on a dinner and then I'm like I'm not into this and then but also I don't know I'm fucking rambling and I'm making no sense do you ever go on activity dates like mini golfing arcades Dave no and but I would love that Dave and Buster's would be the best I fucking I love Dave and Buster's I actually would love that more I, I wish more guys thought of that they're just like oh drinks are dead like, which I get but I'm like I'm down to do something fun maybe a date at air one oh <laughs> that's a yeah a big hef that's more expensive than a fucking dinner <laughs> why is it so expensive i don't know i think it's the name brand i mean the quality of the food is really good but it's it's a lot there was someone on tiktok who was making videos about guess the price of what the item is how much do you think a box of chicken tenders is like the, from the hot bar from the hot bar yeah but it's like a small box. It's a small twenty-two dollars a pound. Twenty-six dollars for like that box. I, I eat there a lot. <laughs> How much do you think four hard-boiled eggs are? Oh, I get that a lot too. No, you don't. I do. I, they're so good. They are so. Good. Aren't they just eggs? They're just eggs, but you can tell they're healthy, and it's a convenient. It's a convenient thing. How do it's you tell they're healthy? Thing. They just taste real. You know. Okay, comparing that to the one that comes in the. Oh yeah, compared to like. Compared to those fast food ones, of course. I know, but you. It, but you like, can get the same ones in the supermarket. In the bag and the nasty. It's not nasty. It's, it's normal. No, I don't Guess know. Guess how much? Well, you know, ten dollars. That's crazy uh, uh, for yeah. four eggs. Yeah, yeah, it's more than a whole. Yeah, no, it's it's stupid. During Thanksgiving, how much do you think sliced turkey breast was? Thirty. Seventy-five. <laughs> oh shit! This is ridiculous. Shit. Okay. I'm that over is, it. It is. It is. It is. It is. Don't even get me started on the smoothies. But what about the buffalo cauliflower? It's amazing. It's so fucking good. But it's so much. <laughs> but I can't recreate that. Also, do you know all their hot bar stuff is like gluten free? How does that affect me? I don't know. It's just cool. I don't think it does. It's LA. Don't you care if it's soy free, vanilla free, air free? Uh... Air free? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what gluten free means. A lot of people are allergic to gluten. I know they are, but I don't know how that affects me. 
I feel like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can we, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> like you got all that. I, was like, I don't think it affects my digestion any mm. different. I think I'm 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 good. It affects me. Does it? Yeah. Why indigestion? What? Indigestion you get? Oh yeah, I get so bloated. It sucks. Oh. I'll still eat it. <laughs> Did you see Southwest Airlines had new seats unveiled? No. They're really thin. What? People said that it's like the Ozempic seat. Wait, can but they, I see it? Yeah, they took away their comfy, cozy seats. Southwest? Southwest. Those are the new seats. They're like paper thin. I thought it was a joke, but they released the video. Is it comfortable? I doubt it. I'm hoping. They're so comfortable. They have to be. They, I feel like they have to be more comfortable than the first ones. Or they is it just to save room? I don't think they downgraded they look, it. It does look like a more of a bus seat. It looks way more of a bus seat. Yeah. Unless maybe Hopefully that fits it's just the vibe. like forty-five minute flights. Yeah, just to Vegas. Yeah. I don't Dang. Know. Who do you think is the greatest online marketer right now? Marketer. Yeah. I mean, the last few times I was actually like gagged from something was the Skims Lana Del Rey Valentine's collection. Like that was good. Great campaign. I'm the wrong demo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so good. Like, that was like a holy fucking shit moment. I feel like Skims is having a moment now. Skims is really, I feel like they've, now that they've passed the we're not just shapewear or basics, I feel like now they've reached this point where it's like, we could do anything and it would feel on brand, pretty much, which I think is a really awesome spot for them to be. Like, they've already like dabbled. Also, I love how they actually get people like... If it's a, a men's collection, they'll get athletes in that. Like, they're doing... You know how Red Bull's very, like... Red Bull's such a good example because with athletes, they'll actually get athletes who are in that realm. And I feel like Skims is also doing something extremely similar. Oh, where it's like, okay. you can... It, they showed, a, like, a surfer wearing Board the shorts. new jersey. Yeah, like, something, whatever. But instead of just hiring a normal model, like, they're going above and beyond to do that. And I think that's something they're doing really well. That's really smart. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Or even they had, um, they worked with, I want to say they worked with a lot of like really well-known college basketball players. Yes. And I like, that's sick. Like they didn't have to do that, but also why not do that? You have the budget, you have the money, like go above and beyond. And I think that's, that's something I really admire about them. Were you always a Kim Kardashian girly? Yeah, but not like, like I really respect her. As the hustle? As like, I'm like, wow, you're like, you're very talented, even though I know the world doesn't think shit. I like, I so see, I'm like, you're so talented in what you're doing and like marketing and business and stuff. Um, I know people disagree, but. I don't get why. I feel like it was just such a joke, which obviously they kind of played into of like, oh, I'm not, I don't do anything. It's like, okay. If everyone could get famous from a sex tape, the lot, there'd be a lot more people. You know what I mean? She's been at the top for like 15 years. Yeah, and I, I, I love watching how they've evolved, too. Mm -hmm. Do you watch any Mr. Beast videos? Uh, yeah, actually. You know what happens with me with Mr. Beast videos? I'm subscribed, but I don't click it, but I'll be scrolling on the app, and then I just watch the first few 15 seconds. The next thing I know, I watch the whole video without clicking. Like, I'm so... It actually like gets my attention so much. Or, like, halfway through, I'm like, fuck it, Alicia. Okay, like, let's click and actually watch and, like, read some comments. But every time I'm like, oh, I see the thumbnail. I see the title. And then the autoplay starts playing. And the autoplay starts playing, and I'm just kind of, like, looking at it. And then the next thing I know, I watch the whole thing. Like, every single time. He kills it. Like, it's genuinely incredible. Oh, my God, yeah. I told you how one time I talked to him on the phone. And no. I asked for like, oh my God. So I- <laughs> I asked for a billion dollars. <laughs> no, I was like, hey, can you give me a million dollars? Um, so I've never met him before, but I posted a video years ago because I, I love doing videos like how to be a YouTuber, how to be an influencer, how to make money from this job and doing this, which I want to post more of those, but I posted one forever ago. And it was so funny because I remember thinking this video flopped. It didn't perform well, blah, 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 blah. And I was really down on myself. And then uh, TK was working for me at the time and she goes, Mr. Beast commented on your video and remember how which they still do there's so many bots and uh just spam commenters who pretend to be Mr. Beast I thought for sure it was that and she's like no it's actually him and I forget I had men showed him in the video as an example of someone who's like killing it etc so he commented something like hey that's me or I don't know something like that and TK was like you should dm him and be like hey what are the odds like we could hop on a phone call and like you can like uh roast my channel or something like just like look it over or whatever and he was like sure so we end up on a phone call that turns into which he was so nice and I, he probably doesn't even remember me but I remember being so like 
you do not have to do this. Also, I'm like so in a whole different niche. Like I'm, I mean, compared to his, at the time he had to have at least still had like 50 million subscribers in. I know he's like over a hundred million now. Um, but he was like, yeah. So like, I came across your video and I was watching because I like like watching those types of videos and then you men mentioned me and I thought that that was so funny so I commented blah 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 he was like I love learning about other influencers and verticals how they started etc so it's on we were honestly we're just talking about like that type of business stuff and he was like yeah I spend like one or two hours a day just brainstorming ideas like that's all I do like I and like I go for a walk and just brainstorm for a minimum of like two hours a day and I was like so, he, so I basically was like, roast my channel, like, what do you think? And he was like, well... Were you filming this? No, I should have. But I, like, I didn't want to... I don't know. Oh, you just wanted to learn from him. Yeah. Got but initially, it. I was like, oh, like, that'd be a funny video. But also, I just... I never want to bother anyone. I'm like, oh, I don't want you to think I'm using you. So I was just like, like you know, like, let's just have a phone call instead. Um, and yeah, it was really interesting. I should have filmed it because, like, forget half of it. But I remember that was a huge thing that stood out. And then I don't know if it's changed, but he was like, yeah, I also don't have any TVs in my house because I don't want to be distracted from my content and stuff. And I was like, that is crazy. But then I brought up burnout because that was a huge thing for me. So I was like, it's inevitable for everyone. Like, call me when you get burnout because, like, it will happen if you do not delegate. But at the time, I think he still had, like, 30 employees then. But, like, it wasn't really well known. So when he told me that, I was like, wow, that's a lot of employees. Like, at least you have a lot of help doing this because there's no way. But that was also before. I feel like now, I mean, now his videos are fucking crazy. Like, every single one is a huge, It's I mean, it's a movie, every single one. Did you change anything about your channel after he went through it? It was really hard because I understand from the the clickbait, like, vo like I understand that realm but lifestyle is so different because people just want to see me doing my laundry or like making my coffee. So I feel like I took a lot of things with a grain of salt, but tried to figure out how I could apply it to myself. Do you know what I mean? And did you? Yeah. I think the biggest thing was I was still coming out of my burnout era then. So it was hard. It, I was very aware of that's how I used to be. I used to be way more like, let's do crazy things and try to outdo myself. But also taking into account my own mental health and just realizing I like I can't do that. Also I'm I'm not trying to have 40 employees. So I think I think that was a really I don't know, but I respect the shit out of him. What do you think your secret sauce is for lifestyle stuff? Honestly, just like being honest and vulnerable with your audience because I've changed niches so many different times. Like what kind of niches have you changed though? Oh, but I started makeup tutorials. Right. Then it turned into lifestyle, then it turned into comedy. Then it went back to lifestyle and then vlogs are in there. And I think honestly, like I'm just so grateful I can still be doing this. And like the people who've grown up with me, I don't know. I really try not to take any, any of it for granted. There's definitely times all influencers get like an ego for a second, but I truly am just like so thankful like, I'm still here. And like if I can keep doing this for, I don't know. And, and, and thanking them. I think so many creators are so dumb and forget why they're here in the first place. Again, we all get egos at times, but I always just try to think of myself in high school when I first started YouTube and I was just so excited and loved doing it. I remember telling myself if I could just cut even by the end of the year and this is what I do for my life, like I would love that and I'd be so happy. And here I am like actually making money from it and still here doing it. I think it's going to be 16 years in April. It was 2008 when I started. Like that's crazy. When you're pivoting all those different verticals, are you trying other things in between that aren't working? Or do you like jump right into it and it just works? I, I, would, I would say I jump into it. However, it's more of a slow burn. I'm very aware if I just overnight rebrand myself and change everything, it's gonna I'm going to feel a disconnect from my viewers because then they're going to think you're fraudulent all of this this whole time. They're going to be like, who are you? I, don't, I thought I knew you and I don't. So I think I'm just very aware because I feel that way with people who I like. And if they change randomly, I'm like, oh. I thought I knew you. Like, I guess I don't know you, which obviously, you know, so I think I'm always just thinking of from the viewer's perspective. So let's say I'm doing comedy and I want to get more into daily vlogs. Like instead of just the next day only doing vlogs, like you're going to lose all of those followers, which you have to accept anytime you change. There's going to be some people who drop off. Um, but also don't just abandon what you made. So like do a comedy video and then switch and do a vlog. And then in one of your comedy videos, maybe film it like a vlog style, like try to show them who you're you know, the direction you're trying to go. Cause I guarantee there's a lot of people 
who love comedy videos and didn't know that they like vlogs until you showed them what it could look like, you know? Like, you want people to care about you versus just your content. You're so smart. No, I mean, it's harder than it's... Uh, we've been through... We've been through... <laughs> we've been through a lot. Was there, like, a peak of your career that was just unreal? Oh, my God. My back-to-school era. That's why it's so iconic. From the beginning? Um, The back-to-school stuff is when my channel finally started growing. Like, after four or five years when I first started, nothing had a viral moment. But the second I started doing, like, outfits for back-to-school, oh, my God, 100,000 views. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, Keep in mind, I was already, like, a senior then I like or, like, a freshman in college. So those videos, I just did ev- anything back-to-school related, I did. Like, that was my niche. And were you so hyper-focused on what the next one is? How is it going to Oh, I would have a running list of everything. It would be like, um, I'm I'm shocked I didn't do phone cases for back to school. Like, I like anything back to school related outfits, um, awkward situations. That was like a, ske- like a sketch comedy thing I would do. Um, obviously, back to school hauls, school supplies, what's in my backpack, like stationary, whatever. I mean, it, it felt like the Disney Channel thing. Was there a posting cadence, too? Were you just oh, doing one a week? once a week. And then my prime prime, I did two times a week, which I don't know how I did it, but I did. And was the AdSense just great? Yes and no, because there was at the time you could only have one ad. Oh, this is before mid rolls. Yeah. So when I started posting two times a week, that's when I, I remember I actually did a collab with um, Shane Dawson forever ago. And I remember I stumbled into the fact that I could add an extra ad. And I'm like... I, I hit up all my friends. I'm like, guys, there's like, what is this? Oh my God. And I had made like four times the amount that I normally was making. Um, and I was like, what is happening? Like it was dra- It was significantly more money. How, so, how important do you think it is to have those friends that you can bounce those things off of? Oh, so important. I think in any industry though, you know, and they don't necessarily have to be close, close, close friends, but also it's nice when they are because you can have honest feedback from people. And you got lucky to where all those people are just here for the whole time. I, that's one thing I feel like a lot of people have asked over the years, like, do you need to be in LA or do you need to be out here to like do content creation? And I'm like, no, you don't. However, for me personally, it helped a lot that I was close because that's how I started making my friends was I would like go to an event. Um, I met my first friend, Mia. I met my life is Ava. Like we were like, oh, we all live in Southern California. Let's carpool. Um, And that's a huge, oh my God. And then we collabed. Like that was a huge reason for growth. Now, obviously it's not just LA, but I think you need a community and like no matter what you're in, you know? Yeah. Have you been to any events lately? Um, I went to <laughs> what? What? Oh, <laughs> I, have. I sorry that was a while ago. Um, I tried to black out that experience. Um, as well as Lana because I just can't believe it ever happened. And I who else is on? Oh, Taylor Swift. She's next. She she that would probably be the trifecta. But I'm more than I'm just happy. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. Um, I did. I was invited to Beyonce's hair brand Sacred the launch. It's amazing. The clarifying shampoo. So good. Um, another pinch me moment. How the fuck am I here? Like those are, th- I just, the whole night at that event, I, I felt so bad because people kept trying to talk to me and I just kept looking around being like, I can't believe I'm here. I was like, I'm just happy to be here. I'm literally just so happy to be here. Like this is insane. And I feel so honored. And, um, and yeah, nothing, sh- nothing like out of the ordinary happened though. Right. Oh, I mean, except, you know, I did get to meet her and then I was told Blue Ivy watches my videos and I I almost fucking passed out. <laughs> did you like step it up after that? You're like, fuck. Oh, oh, I feel like I've said this story so many times, so I'm so sorry to anyone online who hates it, um, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. Um, the longer story short is I go to the event at the very end and Beyonce was there and I am freaking out. She's beautiful. She's angelic. At one point, her PR person's with her. Imagine being Beyonce's like PR. I'm sorry. She's walking her around, and I swear the whole room didn't know she was there. The PR or the the rest of the room, oh. like like Beyonce and her PR person, because she must have come out from a curtain like this that happened to be right next to. I, I was with um like Brittany Broski, Drew Afwalo, Bretman Rock, Remy, and we happened to be at this like uh like tall cocktail table, 
And she, the next thing we know, she's just kind of like there and there's like a small huddle around her, but we're, we're a part of that huddle without even trying. We're like, what the heck? Oh my God. So the rest of the room is chilling. Like I know they didn't know she was there for a fact. So we're like filming and we're just like, oh my God. And then I swear she like looks at me and then she like waves to us like, hi guys or whatever. Um, I'm sure she was just trying to like fill the awkwardness cause we're all just literally <laughs> staring there like what? Um, and I... I was like, I've never been around someone who literally feels like a queen. Did you, you felt that? And the energy? Oh, I've never been around someone who like, just, I felt like you are, the, your presence. It was crazy. But also, oh, so anyways, she does a speech. The rest of the room finally realizes she's there. And I go, Alicia, that was your chance. It's okay. I'm just happy to be here. Like she looked at you. That's, that's enough. Then fast forward the end of the night. I'm like, she still has to be here. Like, Alicia, like, actually go try to, like, at least say hi to her, like, or, like, introduce yourself or something or ask for a photo or I don't know, whatever. When that crosses your brain, are you on a mission by yourself? You're like... I was because Rim's feet were hurting, so she was sitting. But also, I'm like, when I'm drunk, I'm just a little butterfly and I'm, like, going around everywhere. Um, And I saw her taking photos with people. So I was like, oh, my God. Okay, it was okay. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is your chance. So then I go up to my friends. I'm like, hey, like, what's the tea? Like, is she still here? Do we know? And they go, we, we're pretty sure she's still here, but we think she's back behind this black curtain because they're taking only certain people back there and instantly I'm like oh I'm not getting picked I understand and also they're not going to do that to her and just like let her be out in the middle of this event there was probably like 150 people there um so it was intimate but still big and um I was like it's okay like there were other celebrities there like who actually like deserved to like meet her I was like I, it's not gonna be me it's totally fine and around that time I see the uh, um the girl who works at the brand, her name's Asia, and she's she's walking around and like looks like she's on a mission. And I look at her and she looks at me across the room and literally just goes like this with her finger and is like, come here, like gesturing to like come here. And I about faint. I'm like, oh, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And I'm like, where's Remy? Where's Remy? Where's Remy? Remy's nowhere to be found. I'm like freaking out. Um, I get into a group of four people and then we get ushered back to this curtain there's a black curtain in front of us with a security guard and we're all like freaking out we're like oh my god everyone's saying like I want to take a photo I'm about to meet Beyonce and the security guard is just like has his fingers or his fingers he has his hands crossed and is like they're not gonna let you take your photos your phones in there I'm just letting you know and everyone's like freaking out like what and I was like it's okay I just want to be in her presence like it's okay it's okay he goes yeah but there'll be you can take there's a professional camera so then we walk past this black curtain which then leads us to a line of probably like 20 influencers influence I say influencers people who are in line to go into this room so then I realized oh my god she's in this room we're in line it's like meeting Mickey Mouse no, literally <laughs> it felt like like meet like a Disney meet and greet um and I'm freak I'm just freaking out because I'm like oh my god thank god I brought my drink with me because I was like I was like what are you gonna say Alicia like what do you say what do you say what do you even do what do you say um again I see Asia again the girl who works at the brand and she's down the hall kind of by the door and looking in our direction is like saying to come here and I'm with some big people there's like uh Bretman Rock is literally behind me okay so I'm thinking she must obviously be talking to Bretman behind me I literally I keep telling people I felt like I was in middle school dodgeball where, where, where you know like you you know you weren't picked first but you're like me <laughs> like, but then, and then you're like kind of shy about it because you're like oh oh clear, clearly you're talking about the person but like you know I literally transported back to then and then she's like saying something and is like saying come here and I literally am like me like huh? him like who what and then she's like Alicia come here I about I you're like this no, Alicia? Like, me? <laughs> Alicia Marie <laughs> Marie yeah um so I'm like I'm like I don't know what's happening I don't know what's happening clearly I looked terrified because the first thing out of her mouth she's like meeting me so we kind of like meet in the middle um and she goes don't worry you're not in trouble because I'm sure I looked like a deer in the headlights I am sure um and then we walk to the very front of the line she whispers in my ear blue wants to meet you <laughs> I'm sorry. I like, I can't even think of, I can't even think about it. I'm literally like, what the fuck? Like, huh? Like, keep in mind, I, I went to the Renaissance film premiere and then I saw it two other times because I loved it so much. Like, I, like, I love Beyonce. I love Beyonce. I love Blue. Um, I was already unwell of just the thought of 
seeing Beyonce, let alone meeting Beyonce, let alone finding out Blue watches my videos. Which videos? No idea. No idea. Don't care. No idea. <laughs> I'm like, makeup tutorials, back to school. I'll I'll bring them back. I'll bring them back. I'll, <laughs> I'll bring them back. <laughs> um, so then I get into a group with Brittany and Drew, which I was so happy about because love them. Um, you still haven't met her yet. Haven't met her. Now okay. we're at the front of the line in front of the door. Asia's like, here's how it's going to go. I'm going to bring you in one by one. I'm going to introduce you to her. Um, then you guys will take a group photo. I'm like losing my breath. No, I, I'm like, <laughs> if I, I need my inhaler. <laughs> um, this is why I can't think about this because I just fucking, I geek out. I'm like, what? Um, also, I'm, I'm really not cool. So like this shit happens and I'm like, why? I'm like, what? Um, whew, okay. I just pictured that TikTok of like, <laughs> they show Beyonce dancing and then it's like the woman cleaning the house. She falls over and farts. No, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? So the door opens. It's this massive room, okay, with six or seven, like, videographer photographers. Then there's a huge couch with her publicist, Beyonce's publicist, her mom, and Blue are sitting on, and I think a few other people. Honestly, I blacked out. And then Beyonce's just sitting there in the middle of the room. By herself. By herself, standing and smiling. And I'm first in line. So the door opens, and I just, like, I don't, I don't freak out easily about people I lost my shit like I I literally and I didn't even try to hide it I was like hi (laughs) like I I didn't even know what to say I was just like hey (laughs) like I was oh my god I keep spitting I was so just like what the fuck like I no control over my body did you know what you were gonna say as soon as you saw her I had thought about it earlier, but at this point, we just, Asia introduced us. She's like, hi, this is Alicia. So I shake her hand. I'm hi, it's so nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. I literally, oh. and then because we're, I'm like, Beyonce's here. Can't even say that. She's here. Um, and then I come in and then I kind of usher around her so the other girls can come in. Right. So it's because then we were going to do a group photo and the, I'm 30 years old. Right. I'm standing there. I see blue out of the corner of my eye, like stand up. And I couldn't face her because I was so nervous. <laughs> she's 11. And I was like, <laughs> like, 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 she's probably where your computer is, right? And I'm standing like this. Like, I like, I go and I'm standing like this and I see her the court, like my peripheral view. And I'm like, whew, I'm like, what do I do? What do I say? I can't be like, hi, you watch me. That's weird. And then I'm like, what do I say? Like, I don't know what to say. And then I'm like, well, don't fucking ignore her, Alicia. Like, she's probably like, wants to, like, you know, she wants to say hi to you. But also like, why does she want to say hi to you? So I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm like, just turn. So I like, I just turned and I was like, like, I was like, she's 11, Alicia. It's okay. It's okay. And she was so adorably sweet. She literally is like, hi, I just wanted to say like, I I really love your videos. I watch them all the time. I think you're really funny. The first thing out of my mouth. I don't, I'm literally like, I don't know what's, I don't know what's, I can't comprehend what's happening. The first thing out of my mouth is literally, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm losing subscribers every day. (laughs) (laughs) And I think that was my version of being like, why? Why do you watch? Why? Oh my God. (laughs) Did you respond? Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then, and she's like, and here's another one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, And she was just like so sweet and smiling. And then I, again, I was this, normally I'm really shy. It, It takes me a long time to open up to people. I couldn't shut up. I literally couldn't shut up. I just kept talking. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. But, like, she was like, yeah, I watch them all the time. You think they're funny? Cool. I'll be a comedian again. Hey, guys, (laughs) rebrand. Bye, lifestyle. She's she's a comedian. Um, I I literally go, oh, my God, thank you so much. But but you inspire me. Oh, my God, when I watch the film, which if you haven't seen the Renaissance film, anyone, I'm not kidding. Like, please watch it. At least go look up the scenes about Blue because – I always thought Beyonce and Jay-Z were like, yeah, let's like get her in there young because she comes out for a song and does like a dance to it um, in the show. So I was like, oh, that's smart of them to kind of like get her like used to doing all this stuff. But in the actual the film, she pre- she went up to her mom and was like, I think I'm ready to finally go on stage. And Beyonce said, hell no. She was like, I will. I refuse. The stage is nowhere for an 11 year old like. I understand, like, I can't even imagine now with the scrutiny that you're going to have, like, the pressure on your shoulders, like, I'm so against it. And then Blue kept telling her, like, no, I'm serious, like, I, I promise I'll go to, like, rehearsals, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Um, and they finally agree, fine, you can do one show, but you have to promise you will be up every single day going to rehearsals, taking this seriously, like, this isn't a joke, you can't, like, you can't just, like, back out, like, this is, you know, 
a decision you're taking we're not taking it lightly so she wakes up every day at like seven something to like do rehearsals and like like takes it so seriously she comes out for I'm not sure what show it was but she gets so much hate online and so many people are dragging her like so so how the internet can be cruel and then somehow apparently one of her friends like showed her that and in the film Beyonce's like I'm so upset that she even had access to see some of those comments of course when you're Jay-Z and Beyonce's child like the pressure on your shoulders is just I can't imagine which I tell her 20 million times but then the way that she handled it she literally was like you know what every time I'm just gonna get better so I'm just gonna like keep practicing and blah blah like the way she took it so inspirational so then she ended up um because that was like her outlook with it all um Beyonce they ended up letting her do every show so I it literally is so inspiring like please watch it and I'm like, how would I act with my 11-year-old? And, like, TikTok is so fucking cruel. Like, the internet's cruel enough. I can't even imagine, like, I can't imagine. And the way that she handled it was so amazing. So go back to me with her. I'm like, I was so inspired by the film and the way that you handled all the criticism and critique. I can't imagine the pressure on your shoulders. And she's like, yeah. Like, she agreed that she had pressure on her shoulders. It's so sad. I said it, like, 20 times. She probably was like, bitch, shut up. We get it. I have pressure. on. I was like, I just can't believe the pressure you have on your shoulders. I can't believe you have the pressure you have on your shoulders. Um, and she's just like smiling like yeah and I was like seriously like just find like good friends who like support you and are around you and like you're so talented and blah 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 blah. was then, Jay-Z there too no oh All my right. god um and then the next thing I know I like I I'm like oh what and I forget we're all in a room where everyone's trying to take a group everyone's photo. just staring at the two of you <laughs> no I blacked I'm so glad I did because I forgot everyone was there and then I turn and Beyonce's just smiling watching me talk to her daughter and I was like <laughs> wow I literally, and then I go and I just I was like, I can't. Like, I can't. And then she made a comment, like, isn't she so grown? And I was like, yeah. Like, as if she's my own child. I was like, yeah, she is. <laughs> and then we take a group photo. And around this time, sorry, this is such a long story. Around this time, I'm like, okay, Alicia, this is your time to say something. You had it earlier. You didn't say anything. Like, and I know you've been talking so much, but, like, you have to say something to Beyonce because, like, you didn't talk to her. So we take our photo. And then I just kind of, like, and she's right next to me. So I, I tap her on her shoulder. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. This will just take, like, two seconds. But I have to say it. And thank the Lord God Almighty. It came out so good. And I didn't stutter or stumble over my words in any way, shape, or form. God bless God and the alcohol in my veins. Um, so... I just picture you being so drunk. None of this went <laughs> no, how you're saying no, no, no. it. Went, it was so good. Thank God. Thank God. I know I looked so awkward. It felt like it was an hour long. It probably was like three minutes. But I went with the brand to her tour and we met her mom. And they said like, no phones, but you can meet Miss Tina Knowles. Like, oh my God. What do you say to the woman who birthed Beyonce? Do you know what I mean? Like you have one moment. So pretend you're Beyonce. I'm me. <clears throat> I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, I promise this will only take a minute. Yeah. And, she, and then she just turned towards me and was like smiling. I was like, oh. so I was like, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. The whole room's staring at me. Again, there's like 20 people here. I go, <laughs> I'm like, so when we went to the, when we went to your tour, um, we, t- we were told we were going to meet your mom. And I was thinking, oh my God, what do you tell Beyonce's mom? Like, it's Beyonce's mom. Also, you said that to I her? I said that to Beyonce, which oh, is just funny. Um, also, I didn't know Tina was sitting there on the couch. I'm such an idiot. I was like, and I remember thinking, what do I say to Beyonce's mom? But I said, I know you're proud, but I hope that you're really proud of Beyonce to Tina. And she said, it's kind of confusing. Tina's, (laughs) Beyonce's mom told me, oh, I'm so proud of her. But you know what I'm most proud of her for is how grounded she is. So then I told Beyonce, I said, so my word for the year was grounded um, because I really, really, I loved that. And then the whole room, it sounded like a laugh track it was like ah like it was like (laughs) and I was like anyways I'm so sorry I'm taking everyone's time because I just couldn't shut up I was like it it came out so beautifully and she's like wow thank you so much like that means so much and blah 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 and I was like thanks for having us and then we leave and I turned around and like waved to blue and she was like waving and then I looked at Beyonce and I was like bye and she's like waving and I was I literally turned the I come out I turned the corner Remy wasn't there because she was like somewhere so she wasn't she wasn't it didn't happen she didn't get to meet her. She didn't get to meet her. So the second I, I walk out of that curtain, I look at Remy and I'm just like shaking my head like, <laughs> bitch, you're never going to believe what just happened. Thank God Drew and Brittany were with me because like we got to like debrief about it. So Rem takes out her phone and that's the video that went pretty viral of me crying because I started sobbing. So I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like what just happened? Did you ever get the photos with her? Yeah, they came back. Um like a few days later and that's when it felt even more real because it almost was like did that happen you know what I mean and then Bretman texted me later that night and was like girl not blue wanting photos with us like she knows a bad bitch or something like that and I was like wait 
what? So then he's like, yeah, apparently she only knew us out of everyone. And I was like, I'm just scared. The more I talk about it, the more she's going to be someone who unsubscribes, which is totally fine. And I'm just also like, I don't care. I, I, it's totally fine. But like, you never know who's fucking watching your shit. Do you know what I mean? This is the greatest celebrity story I've ever heard. And then the 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 thing that I really walked away with it from, other than being starstruck and just like, what the fuck, um, was like, like, like always be true to yourself. Like, especially in this world, everyone's trying to be the next, like copy the Alex Earls or be the next, you know, Addison Ray or like you're always trying to grow and be someone else. And it's like, like even the Lana situation and this Beyonce situation, like both of them made me feel so just comfortable in my own skin and like who I am. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest thing with creators, especially people starting out, like we're all trying to act like someone we're not or be someone we're not. And it's like, they like you for you. And like, that's enough. Like, and it, it just like, I think that's something I like just want to continue preaching to people. Cause it's so hard to not compare yourself to others or like you're trying to be so cool. It's just like, just be yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. People want Joe. They're watching right now. Everyone <laughs> like this video for Joe. Please make sure to subscribe. <laughs> yes. I met my hero and it didn't go anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, tell me. Mark from Blink-182. I saw him at Chain Fest. I've told this story a bunch of times already. I walked into Chain Fest, and as soon as we walk in, I look to my left, and Mark Hopp is from Blink-182, my hero, is standing right there. And I gasped, and I swear he was staring at me, and he saw it. So the entire night, every time we're passing him, Caitlin's, like, nudging me to, like, go say hi, yeah. but I, I can't. Yeah. There, I, same thing. Like, yeah. what do I say? I want and I want to be his friend. I don't want to just, like, say be the guy to say hi. Well, also, it's hard, too, because... I've also met celebrities where I can tell they don't want to be there and they don't want to take a pic and they're just like, and so I never want to be that person. But also when it's someone like, you're like, I fucking have to, like I have to. Yeah. I was also waiting for like that cue where yeah. someone else was talking to him and a photo was happening yeah. and then I can go, but I, that cue didn't happen. Yeah. He was always with like Damn. a team, whatever. We were there for like maybe two hours trying to make this happen. And as he was leaving. You're like, now's my chance. Yes, and Caitlin pushed me, and I, I couldn't say hi to him, but I am also a fan of his wife. So I go, Sky, and she turns around, she's so happy, she's like, hi. I'm like, I love your husband. <laughs> and she goes, come meet him. I'm like, okay. And I look at Caitlin, I'm like, what the fuck do I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she goes, Mark, these people want to say hi to you. Talk to them. I'm going to go get tacos. And she leaves us with him. So I... I'm trying. What did you say? I don't know. I I like blacked out. I she, he's like, hey, so what do you do? I said I do food. I eat in my car, which I like. I haven't done <laughs> mukbang in forever. And Caitlin's like, why, why? don't you talk about your podcast that you're doing? I, like, I don't know. You know. Why is it that like like you can't play? No matter how much you practice, like what comes out of your mouth is. Just, you know, I eat in my car. <laughs> I, like as soon as I walked away, I'm like, why didn't I tell him I had a signature bass? That was what got me into music when I was five. Yeah, like yeah. why didn't I say that? Yes. But I couldn't. I couldn't think of what to say. Uh, and I didn't want to ruin the moment, but yes. I ruined the moment. No, no, no. And then he started talking about Big Chill with Caitlyn. And he's been there before. And I, they started talking. I'm like, oh, my God. Thank God. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, I have a wife. I'm cool. I promise. <laughs> you know, I swear to God. She's like, yeah. And, yeah, it just didn't go how I wanted it to go. But at least now there's, like, next time I see him out yeah. in public, I can say hi. Yeah. So. Also, in the end, like. Whenever I'm with Remy, I get a lot more people coming up who will say hi to me. And I know that they feel comfortable with Remy because, like, she's so, like, warm and bubbly and, like, hee, 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 where I I feel like I can have resting bitch face. And I look like I may not want to meet someone, but, like, I actually do. My worst fear is that someone meets me and has, like, a bad interaction or, like, they – not a bad interaction. Like, they – It's not what they wanted it to It's be. not what they wanted because I've been let down by people, too, and it sucks. It sucks when you, like, really like someone. You're like, oh, I thought they'd be X, Y, Z, whatever. But – um. Like, maybe, I, I think I've, like, maybe he's the same. Like, maybe he has anxiety. Like, I'll go out and have anxiety. If I hear people being like, if I can tell someone, like, wants a photo but won't say something, I get more anxious. And I almost just am like, fuck, like, what do I do? Because it's just such a weird dynamic. But, like, I'm always happy to meet people. And I'm like, I always want people to come say hi. So, like, maybe he, like, just feels the same way. Yeah. He, he, he was great. He was incredible. But my goal was to get him on the podcast. So I think my expectations were... You're like, I eat my car. I, my <laughs> expectations were not to just say hi and walk away. Yeah. It was to 
be so kind that he likes my presence so much that he wants to come to my house and talk to me for an hour. <laughs> I get that. I will say, every, I'm such a believer, whether people believe it or not, everything happens for a reason. So maybe now he's seen some of your clips and he recognizes you from that and now it'll feel more legit. And exactly. now, like, like, uh, like, divine timing. It'll happen. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been putting it out there for so long and the people that I have gotten are people that I've manifested for so long yes. and it's just a timing thing. It's a timing thing and maybe that podcast wouldn't have been good and you would have been like, oh, I could have done better and now next time you'll feel more prepared. And when they have an album coming out and even though they're going to sell a million records, they want to sell a million and three, he's yep. going to come on mm -hmm. and he's going to use me for promotion. Yeah, or maybe there will be like a, an event and <laughs> the wife will remember you guys and be like, oh yeah, you should invite these people, blah, blah, oh, blah, you're blah. you're the taco guy. Yeah. Yes, please come back. Big come chill. Back. Yes, big chill. Let's do it together. Or have big chill reach out be like, hey, I know you're a fan. Here's a gift card. And then they'll subconsciously oh my God. remember... Or have Caitlyn DM the wife and be like, hey, like, you probably don't remember. We met forever ago. I remember you said you love Big Chill. Here's, like, some whatever. Right. It'll happen. It'll happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. How many energy drinks do you drink a day? Um, About one, which is really bad. Are you trying to stop? <laughs> I'm just trying. So I also have Vyvanse, but I, oh, yeah. I don't take them. Well, I do take them both the same day. I'm trying not to do that because it'll fuck up my sleep schedule. What does Vyvanse do? It's like Adderall. But it's like a slower release one um, for ADHD. So it calms you down, suppresses. It helps me. Yeah, it helps my brain. <laughs> it helps my thoughts come out exactly how I intend for them to come out. Do you ever forget a day and you're like, oh, that's why? Yeah, so luckily th that I just take maybe like once or twice a week. Like I don't take it every day. I could, but I don't. Um, but I... I feel like my Celsius makes me feel similar to that. So I just, I don't know. It's I need to not have it every day. I is still it, love Celsius. Uh, I've been loving Accelerator lately too. What is it? Accelerator. What's that? It's a similar, it's like a similar energy drink. That's Zane likes that one, right? Mm -hmm. The Got guava it. one. What are you guys doing for your podcast next? Um, The second episode? Yeah, what's the routine now? Um, So we are recording Tuesdays, our podcast days. So... We do two episodes at Pretty Basic, one Tuesday, and then the following week we'll do two episodes of Pretty X Unfiltered. And then so we'll bulk every week. But that way Tuesdays never expect to see me on a Tuesday. <laughs> and then is the content not going to cross over? So I think what's interesting is like Pretty Basic is so much more girly, our feelings. Like there's still fun stories on there where – the new pod feels so much more like friends, like a set, like a friend or new girl or like it just feels a di whole different dynamic. Um, so I don't know. I don't think like I even was thinking for Coachella, for instance, I'm sure we'll recap it on both, but it'll probably it'll just be different. It'll be so different. So different. So I think that's what I'm really excited about the new one is because also having four people, you ca you don't have to do as much as far as. The conversation just flows so easily where if it's when it's just Rem and I, I feel like a, a lot of the, I don't know. It's just so, it's so different. We are cry you, on pretty basic all the time. We're like, our feelings, blah, blah, blah. Your feelings are valid, girl. And then like, it's so different on Unfiltered. Do you get nervous opening up yourself that much? Um, I feel like a lot of people have always assumed Rem and I are like super, super, super PG, which granted we were back in the day. Um, I don't mind, honestly, I feel like we're pretty open. I don't mind talking about certain things. I feel like sex, the only thing about my sex life that I love is that it's not online and like no one knows about it. Like that's one thing, like body count, like anything like that, even though it's not a big deal, I love that you can't Google it. I think it's truly the one thing you, about me you can't Google. Because it's all new. It'll be all new. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's why... Like, for instance, that I'm like, and I don't want to, like, just air that out because, like, to me, I'm like, oh, it's the one thing about me you can't Google and get an answer to. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I love that. Right. Did you guys structure the business any differently? Or is everything, like, 25% each way? Oh, yeah. We're, we just split it all four ways. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. We need to add up. It's because it costs a lot. Ev just everything in general costs a lot starting. So we need to add up who owes who what because it's like, is it even or is it, like, I don't know. We need to figure that out. <laughs> Did you end up saving a lot doing it yourself? Oh, my God. So much. We paid a lot of money for our Pretty Basic set, and you don't even see a third of it. <laughs> You've seen it. It's big. It's massive. But on camera, you don't see it, really. Was that how they designed it? 
they designed it more like a talk show, but because we don't have cameras moving and stuff, you don't really, you just see the angles. So like behind you. Yeah. And at, for a long time, it looked like we were just in a cubicle when I'm like, wait, we have this really awesome set that we paid a lot of money for. Um, and I think the guys felt the same way with some of their past sets. So they were, we were like, you know what? We can do this ourselves. Um, the things we did splurge on, which I would splurge again on are the neon sign. Cause I can't do that shit. And then to, um, installing the lights to be from the ceiling saves so much space on the floor. And then it's so consistent. Like the light, we just turned the lights on, boom, they're on. Did Heath do that? Um, no, he has a guy who did it. Got it. That was the, so that was a splurge. We were like, Ooh. could these go on the ceiling? Yeah. Oh, and interesting. It, just think of how much less cables and sh- it's so worth it. No, I want to do that. Uh, but again, once I move the room, yeah, move the but room. Do every that. time I would think about doing it, I'm like, what if I hit a pipe? Because of you. Mm, well, I think that was such a fluke situation. <laughs> Are you sure? Because yes. I see clips on TikTok. Oh, my God. I mean, I've, I, again, I've drilled into that wall so many times and it never happened. <laughs> and this, we used the stud finder. So it was just such a, like, we don't know what happened. But, yeah, I mean, I have a guy if you need him. He was expensive. That was what I wonder. To drill it into the ceiling? Yeah, but they... They did all the cords. They did like it's very minimal. Next time you're over, you should see it because it honestly is it's so nice. Okay, yeah. Do you, ever, if, do you ever notice when you're wearing a hat, like everything is just so shaded? Oh, so yeah, it's, like, I was so like nice. looking. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh wait, let me look up. The other day, Caitlin was saying how the lights are so bright that it hurts her eyes. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, it never hurts my eyes. I didn't realize. You always have I'm a hat. hat. <laughs> oh my god, when we do ads at the Pretty Basics, I I've never pulled this card ever, but a few months ago I. I'm like, hey, everyone, can I pull a diva card? And I'm about, I never pull a diva card. I'm about to pull a diva card. When we are doing ads or it's our lunch break, can we please turn these lights off? Because I get such a headache. And it sounds so weird to be like, okay, everyone, Alicia needs the lights off. But like, I'm not kidding. Like it, it, it it's just like, oh, it, it does. Hurts. It hurts your eyes. It's so bright. Uh huh. So I'm like, if we're just doing ads, because our ads aren't on video, we just do the, the audio. I'm like, can we like figure out the lighting, turn them off? And then do my ads in silence. Yeah. Darkness. Darkness. Go subscribe to Pretty X Unfiltered. It's going to be linked down below. And Pretty Basic. And Pretty Basic. And thumbs up this video. And thumbs up this video. And Alicia Marie. And Alicia Marie Vlogs. And do you have like a fifth channel yet? No. (laughs) Oh. Maybe coming soon. Maybe. All right. Lightweights. Out. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.